In this video, I'm going to go over the basics of creating a library in C. So if you're new to C programming, you're probably writing your entire program in one file, like this program here. Here we have a main function that's using an add and sub function that we've defined. And these add and sub functions just carry out basic addition and subtraction. This is probably the style you've been using so far. But in programming, as we write programs that are larger and larger, it becomes very important to split our programs up across multiple files. And we'll call those files components or modules or libraries, depending on the technology we're using. In C, we generally call them libraries. And even if you're new to C programming, you've likely already been using libraries in your program. For example, even in a simple program here, we're including this standard input output library, and we're using the printf function that's defined inside of it. The printf function is not defined in this file, and yet somehow we're accessing it. What we're going to be doing is creating our own library. The first thing we'll do is take these function declarations and we'll put them into a .h file that we're going to call library.h. This is a file that we call the header file. So we'll take these function declarations and we'll save it in a file called library.h. Next, we'll take the function definitions and we'll save those in a file called library.c. So here we'll say library.c. Next in our main function, we'll say pound include quote library.h end quote. So this is actually pretty much all we need to do as a programmer. What we're doing here is including the header file library.h. We use these quotes instead of these less than and greater than symbols, because this is not a standard library. We use that notation when we have standard libraries being included, like stdio.h or stdlib. When we make our own libraries, we're going to use quotes instead. When we include the library.h file, we're including what's called the header. And the header defines the interface for the library. In other words, things like the functions that are going to be in the library. The .c file is going to contain the implementation, the definition of those functions in the header file in our interface. So if we save this here now, we can actually compile our program such that it'll run using both the library and our main .c file. So over here, if I do ls in this directory, we'll see library.c, library.h, and main.c. I can compile the entire program by saying gcc-o app main.c and library.c. And if I run this here, it's going to make an executable file called app. That's what the dash o does. Dash o and then app is giving the name of the executable to produce. And it's going to compile main.c and library.c together. And it's going to give us an executable called app that we can then run. And if I run app, it's going to work. We add four and five together, we get nine. We subtract seven from 10, we get three. And that's really the basics of creating a library in C. Now creating and working with libraries in C is actually a fairly advanced topic if we really get into it. I'll go over a few points though now, and I'll talk about some other things that I'll make future videos on. So first off, the order of main.c and library.c here doesn't matter. If I remove the app, and then I do a compilation again with gcc-o app, and then I say library.c and main.c, it's still going to work. And I can run app, and it'll work the same way as before. Now in this video, I'm using the GCC compiler, it's called, on the command line in my terminal here. If you're using something like an IDE, an integrated development environment, to compile your C programs, it's possible that the IDE is taking care of this sort of thing for you so that you don't even have to think about it. And that's okay. That's good. It's one less thing to think about. Now with compiling C programs across multiple files, one thing we can still do is we can still include other libraries in our library. So let's say for example, here in our add function, we want to have a printf. So here we'll say printf add function. If I try to compile this now, we're going to have a bad time. So I'll try to compile it using the exact same statement as before. And here we get an error. 
and it's saying implicitly declaring library function printf. And the problem is we haven't included the stdio.h library. So we'll do that now. Here I'll say number sign include stdio.h. So I'm including a library in a library now. If we do a recompilation, it'll now work fine. And I can run the app, and this time it'll print when it's in the add function. So we can have libraries that include other libraries. So you can imagine our C programs becoming very complex and having sort of a tree of libraries that are including each other. And that's exactly what very large complex programs begin to look like. Now this process of working with programs split across multiple files becomes very difficult to manage. And so programmers use a tool called make that uses something called make files to help manage this process and make it simpler to think about and work with. That's something I'm going to make a future video on because it's actually a fairly large topic and we have to have a better understanding of the C compilation process to really understand it. But in this video, I just want to give you the basics of making a library in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.